Hi, my name is Mary. Today FM plays the best music in Lombasa. Today FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milinia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alkriki and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Bath. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks here in Osuri. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, 60-year-old pastor remanded for alleged rape. Australian government reveals assistance for Fiji. And USP gets over $120 million support. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spate. A 66-year-old pastor of Lombasa appeared in court today for the alleged rape of a 16-year-old student. Eleanor Turangai View reports the man was arrested on Wednesday by police and was presented before Magistrate Dama Tumberi at the Lombasa Magistrate's Court today. Pastor Manasa Ulavake is charged with one count of sexual assault, one count of abduction and two counts of rape. It is alleged he committed the offences between November last year and the beginning of this year on four different occasions. Appearing before Magistrate Dama Tumberi, Ulevake opted to engage in the services of a legal aid lawyer to represent him in court. Police prosecution reminded the court that all four counts are indictable offences. Objecting to bail, police prosecution stated that Ulavake and the victim live in the same settlement here in Lambasa and there is a serious likelihood of interference by Ulavake. The prosecution also told the court that they have a serious case against Ulavake as he had admitted to all the offences during the caution interview. Ulavake pleaded with the court to grant him bail as he has commitments to attend to and a family to look after, adding he is willing to cooperate with police. For the charges of sexual assault and abduction, Ulavake elected to have it heard in the magistrate's court. However, because of the two counts of rape, Magistrate Tumberi has transferred the case to the Lambasa High Court. Ulavake has been further remanded in custody. He will reappear at the Lambasa High Court on February 15. Eleanor Turangai View. FBC News. A 58-year-old businessman from Nandi who allegedly raped his 24-year-old employee was granted bail by the Lautoka Magistrates Court as he is a kidney patient. The man is charged with one count of rape and one count of attempted rape. It is alleged the accused raped his 24-year-old employee on two different occasions between December last year and January this year. He was granted bail with the sum of $3,000 with two sureties after a medical certificate was shown in court highlighting the accused had a kidney transplant. The accused surrendered his passport and a stop departure is also part of his bail conditions. His case has been transferred to the Lautoka High Court. It will be recalled on the 13th of next month. The Australia-Fiji Vuvale partnership agreement will now be negotiated by officials in coming months. Following successful negotiation, the partnership will be formally signed when Prime Minister Burenge Mbaini Marama officially visits Australia later this year. Ritika Pratap with the details. The two Prime Ministers have found a lot of common grounds with their shared interests and values, reaching agreement on several areas. The days of take it or leave it are over when it comes to resolving issues. It's not my style, it's not Australia's style, it's not Fiji's style. So this truly is a new chapter. chapter. And as of our newest uh, partnership, we're now more than just neighbours. We have family, Uvale. As members of the same family, we must be honest with each other. We must stay at the table, even, if we may, even when we may disagree. And we must each do our part to maintain a safe and happy home all of us. Australia's Prime Minister Scott Morrison also announced that a dedicated office of the Pacific will be created within the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade to give a loud and authoritative voice. The office will drive the implementation, not just from the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, but from a whole of government perspective. Countries will continue to engage, no doubt and essentially with each of the individual departments and agencies of the Australian government. But there will be a champion sitting within government. Morrison and his wife Jenny were officially farewelled by Prime Minister Vorenge Beni Marama and his wife Mary at the Nosori Airport this afternoon. 
Morrison flew to Nandi to commission the Black Rock camp before concluding his Fiji visit. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. It's a new family affair with gifts. The Australian government revealing a scope of assistance now on offer to Fiji with the bilateral talks underlining several first-time initiatives. Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison reveals that more Fijians will have the opportunity to work in Australia with the Pacific Labor Scheme. In addition, Fijians can expect around 3,000 hours of Australian television content over the next three years as part of the new family ties with the Aussies. Maggie Boyle reports. It's a host of goodies to seal the new Fiji-Australia relationship, which aims to strengthen both our economies. We're beginning work uh, on Fiji's entry into the Australian Pacific Labor Scheme, as I've mentioned. That has already occurred, and uh, we look forward to that playing out over the course of the next year and beyond. We also welcome Fiji into the Pacific Medicines Testing Program. And there is a host of firsts. We're also announcing the Australian Government in partnership with Free TV in Australia will commit some $17.1 million to provide 1,000 hours of new Australian television content each year uh, for three years to Pacific broadcasters. There is also the usual funding support for border security, which will see Fiji acquire two new patrol boats as part of a regional package. The Prime Minister, while receptive of the renewed efforts, notes more can be done. That Australia will be easing uh, restrictions on cover imports a move that will undoubtedly enrich the lives of Fiji and Nagana farmers for generations to come. <coughs> and as we look to loosen the flow of goods, we hope to do the same with our people. Education was another sector to benefit with more than $127 million allocated for USP over the next six years. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. The Australian Prime Minister has today pledged over $120 million support for the University of the South Pacific for the next six years. Scott Morrison made the commitment while giving a keynote address at the university this morning. Morrison says Australia is proud to be associated with USP over the longer term. He says Australia is investing in the young people of our region through the focus of improving the quality of teacher education and education of students at tertiary levels. The Prime Minister says special focus will be on economics, human resource management and tourism management. These resources will enable USP to fulfil its bold mission to make higher education accessible around the region by making university more affordable for young Pacific students. We are beyond pleased to note that your government is committed to continuing its support to our region. Your visit reaffirms our confidence at this university that we are doing the right thing and we are working to achieve the region's, as the region's leading university. Still to come, FHL takes full ownership of government printery and prosecution fails to serve disclosures for alleged murderers. Details after the break. Bula, never go Malakai Leloma, go in the cash on the wrong and bullet fib. Number two, I answer. Why I was it say, say Lombasa, and the teletain of our Roman and bullet fib, number two, and sir. We have a Timeli, a point of town, no Hinatoka, Teletakin and our Roman and bullet fib, number two, and a sir. Never go find in a town, no singer talk, a kit on the Teletakan and bullet fib, number two, and a sir. Bula FM, number two, and a sir. The Catholic Church has made another attempt with the Education Ministry to try and solve the issue of having persons of Catholic faith to head their schools. The Church organized a forum last night in which the Permanent Secretary for Education was invited along with other senior government officials and academics. Savaita Thamboa tells us more. It was a chance for the Catholic Church members to question the Ministry of Education. What regulations, what structure has the government put in place to look after these places, these schools, these uh, religious education? The person that we appoint has to be able to uphold the philosophy, the values, and the tradition of the school. My only question is that where are the stakeholders? when this discussion is moving on. In response, the Education Permanent Secretary says a religious instruction component is different from the issue of appointing the head of school. The fact is that we are a secular state. 
and we need to understand what that means in the way that we operate. However, the leader of the Catholic Church says things need to be seen from a holistic point of view. And that, I think, is what's uh, missing uh, in the conversation or the response from the, the, from the Ministry of Education, the, the absence of faith. The Archbishop earlier this week noted the unique culture of faith-based schools should be considered in their principal appointments. However, the ministry says it will maintain the open marriage system and if any school does not agree, they can look at going private. Sawera Tambua, FBC News. Government printery services has been privatized and Fijian Holdings Limited has taken full ownership of the business starting today. The economy minister says this is in line with government's aim to encourage private sector participation in divestment space. Catherine Krishna reports. Fijian Holdings Limited has partnered with Aitken Spans who will be working with the Sri Lankan company to provide the services. So uh, Seven Deep is a, is a joint venture company. Uh, that has been uh, set up between Fijian Holdings and Aitken Spence. And of course, they have uh, shareholdings with uh, Fijian Holdings uh, owning 75% of Seven Deep and Aitken Spence owning 25%. However, there are certain conditions of the sale. So within the first two years, uh, Seven Deep has to invest $1.5 million in new technology. And the balance of the $3.5 million has to be invested in the balance of the five years. So in over five years, they need to invest $5 million into upgrading uh, the current uh, GPSD. FHL reveals that investment stands at $11 million with $6 million paid for purchase of business and $5 million investment for five years. We are fairly confident we should be able to cater to the entire business needs in Fiji, uh, including, as I said, 2022, the next election, we want to print the ballots. And Within the next five to eight years, we should be able to print the Fiji passport in Fiji. Along with the sale of government printery, a 99-year lease has been renewed for the property. The government has also given a one-year contract to Serendib Investment to carry out all government printery work. Catherine Krishna, FBC News. Fiji will soon see its first public-private partnership project in Lautoka and Bar Hospitals as early as June following concession agreements signed yesterday. Healthcare Fiji Private Limited, a partnership between an Australian company, Aspen Medical, that was awarded the project, will work together with the Fiji National Provident Fund to develop, upgrade, equip and operate the two hospitals to meet international standards. I could see the Thale with more details. Sealing Fiji's first public-private partnership, Aspen Medical and FNPF as major investors are ready to take Fiji's health services to greater heights. We'll be forming one team with the staff who are there at the moment to uh, make our plans on how this will be delivered in the best and most efficient way and the most, and the most quick way. And we expect that will go for maybe about three months. Plans that are in place include equipping both hospitals with modern equipment, provide relevant training to staff, and upgrade existing health facilities to service more than 380,000 residents in Lotoka and Ba. After we get started on that, and then once we have a plan, then, we'll be, then we will be uh, well into, and we will commence the project, uh, and we will be uh, carrying out um, all of those improvements and development that we see, in, that we identify during that observation period. Attorney General Ayar Said Kayum has reiterated that Healthcare Private Limited will be 80% owned by the FNPF and 20% by Aspen Medical. Uh, this does not in any way mean any job losses. Uh, it means the engagement of the staff that are there. They have the option to work uh, for Healthcare Fiji Limited. Uh, or alternatively they can join other public health facilities uh, outside of Motoka and Ba. So those opportunities exist for them. Fijians have been assured this public-private partnership will not affect the current health care services, which Fijians don't pay any fees for at the two hospitals. Akusita Tali, FBC News. Police prosecution has failed to serve disclosures for two men facing murder charges since the 5th of January. Apisai Lomani and Leone Naisake allegedly caused the death of Felipe Loloma in Wailelia Farm in Kandavu. Due to this, the defense counsel for the accused has not been able to make a formal bail application. Rachel Nath with the details. 
Police prosecution was instructed 13 days ago to serve disclosures for the accused before today's seating. However, this has not been the case, hence the duo has been further remanded. The murder incident happened on Boxing Day, where the two allegedly engaged in reckless conduct of assault, resulting in the death of Felipe Loloma. The magistrate noted that murder is an indictable offence and must be trialled in the High Court, transferring the case for a sitting on January 31st. Meanwhile, Apisai Lomani is charged with another count of unlawful cultivation of illicit drugs. It is alleged on December 30th in Kandavu, Lomani cultivated 23 plants of marijuana weighing at 10.5 kg. Disclosures are yet to be served for this matter as well. Rachel Nal, FBC News. Coming up in sports later with Jamie, four Fijian players named in the New Zealand seven side for the Hamilton tournament, but Rachel joins you now with business. Thanks Jackie, good evening and coming up after the break. Revenue and Customs warns taxpayers. And in growing Fiji, four lane projects progressing well. Stay with us. Dollar, I am Eleanor. For the best classic kids, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Senirawa. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osori. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Dino. I'm from Outrigger, Coro Coast, Singapore. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Salote. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osori. Gold FM, only the classic kids. Bula, my name is Mariva. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Altiga, Singatoka. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Leading business tonight, the Revenue and Customs Service is warning taxpayers to abide by the rules of the country or prepare to face the full brunt of the law. This cautionary message comes as one third of Fiji's economy still remains black. Here's more details. Revenue and Customs says non-compliance of tax is a leading contributor to the black economy. It's like looking at you know where uh, the businesses are conducted or on cash basis. So that's that's the whole black economy problem. I wouldn't say this this state we've got an, a complete hold of it. I think you know everyone is it's common knowledge. Uh, how cash dealings are happening. Thus is while the Revenue and Customs is giving opportunities for Fijians to voluntarily comply with the tax laws, tougher fines and imprisonment laws have been introduced to encourage compliance. Here we are giving you a chance, we are talking about voluntary compliance. Uh, it's better you go, get on board yourself. Uh, if we have to get you on board, then you know, be prepared for the full brunt of the law. The black economy is a part of the country's economic activity which is unrecorded and untaxed by the government through its tax monitoring agency. And we now join Sharon from HSC Bank with the latest from the money world. Forex market today was mixed on sentiments. Risk assets are posting a strong January amid signs of support from policymakers in the US and China, with global equities heading for a fourth week of gains. Rates were slightly higher in U.S. Treasuries, following healthy jobless claims and filled a fear Fed numbers. This gave some support to the greenback, however weighed on the euro, which fell on a dovish ECB outlook. According to economics in a latest Reuters poll, the European Central Bank is expected to wait until the fourth quarter to raise its deposit rate. Meanwhile, the Brexit saga continues to make headlines in the EU. And that's it from HFC Bank for this week. Venaka. Thanks for the update, Sharon. On to the exchange rates as it was set this morning. Our currency is doing quite well. So the Fiji dollar showed gains against all the currencies we cover except our major trading partner, the Aussie dollar. As for the commodities prices, it was a mixture. Crude oil prices were up at 52.53 a barrel. Gold was down at 1,291 per ounce and silver closed at 15.53 an ounce. And in tonight's Growing Fiji, the recent unfavorable weather condition affecting the central division hasn't dampened the road work currently underway along the Nasori-Nakasi corridor. 
Fiji Roads Authority Chief Executive Jonathan Moore says the four-lane road project from the Vero Bridge to Nakasi has been progressing well. He says the contractors Higgins Fiji and newcomer Deal Quarry are trying to seal some of the road sections to move traffic from the old road to the new one. Whilst visiting the work site this morning, Moore says they're also working on bus bays and footpaths to ensure pedestrians can start using them. The thing about this work is we're trying to create a new road in a location where there's an existing road and it's, it's in a very narrow corridor, so we have to consider the public safety all the time. And as soon as we can get something open for the public, we will do. Whether that's a footpath or a road section, we will open it straight away. And that's a wrap from the business desk for this week. Jamie joins you now with the very latest in sports. Thanks, Rachel, and good evening in sports tonight. Gareth Baber names final 13 for Hamilton Sevens. And Netball Fiji gets Australian support for World Cup. This and more coming up. I'm Jyotishma. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mitch Shepherd. Mitch Shepherd is hot. Singatoka, Mitch Shepherd is number one. I'm Charlene Robert. Mitch FM rocks in Lombasa. I'm Sonami Nasodi Jackson. Mitch FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt. I'm in Baba Singh Alliance. Mitch FM is hot in Lombasa. I'm Pritika from Jack's Nasori. I love listening to Mitch FM here in Nasori. Mitch FM is hot. Mitch FM is hot. Fiji Airways men's sevens coach Gareth Baber has named his 13-member squad for the Hamilton Sevens. After missing out on the first leg of the series, tough forwards Paul Nranisi Nukula and Tsusova Kurunambili make their return to the tournament team. In the back line, Terry Otamani is the only new inclusion, while Napoleoni Ratu has been dropped. Kalyone Nasoko will continue as captain for this leg of the series. Coach Gareth Baber says uh, playmaker Vatemo Ravuvo will be heavily missed in the upcoming tournaments after he was dropped due to disciplinary issues. And while Ravuvo has always played a vital role in the side, Baber believes there are other players capable of filling the void. Marcel Prasad reports. Vatemo Ravuvo has surely left a vacuum in the team, but Coach Gareth Baber believes players like Waisea Nadungu can take the responsibility onwards. The necessity of uh, Vatemo is sensational at that, and he is one of the best in the world in his, his restarts. Um, but now I feel that obviously there's players that are pushing that here in the squad, and that's what I need to ensure that everybody stays as disciplined as they can be and, and, and is forthright in making sure that they get their skills and their technical work done. Apart from that, Robert Ford, Paula Dranishinikula, has been in his best form and is ready for the Hamilton Sevens. He's always been in contention. Um, he wouldn't be in this training group. He'd be in a separate training group if I didn't feel he was in contention for that. Um, and he's pushed himself all the way. You know, he's an honest and genuine gentleman. And, um, you know, he's, he's put his hand up and worked hard to get exactly where he needs to. He knows the standard he's got to play at. There will be heavy monitoring for Willimon in body two and Meli Deranalangi this time around after an impressive debut in the first leg. The likes of Botitu and Deranalangi, it's their second group of legs and people are going to be watching them now. So they're not a surprise anymore and that comes with its own expectation and pressure. <laughs> This team has surely overcome many hurdles in the past three weeks and is ready to defend their title in New Zealand next weekend. Bashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, four Fijian players have been named in the New Zealand Seven side for the Hamilton tournament. Joe Robovo is also set to don the black jersey for the first time since his blockbusting World Cup campaign last July, having gained New Zealand citizenship to make him eligible for the World Series. The other Fijian players in the squad are Vili Monikoroi, Chona Nareki and Amanaki Nicole. New Zealand is pooled with Spain, Canada and Japan. Netball Fiji is over the moon with the announcement by Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison to assist the Fiji Pearls prepare for the Netball World Cup. President Wainikiti Mbongin Rao says the assistance couldn't have come at a better time. Meli Tavanga reports. 
It's about time the Fiji pearls get to learn from the best in the sport. The government will be working with Netball Australia so it can help the Fijian national team prepare for the Netball Netball World Cup later this year. The Australian Prime Minister also conveyed his well wishes to the girls. Compete in Liverpool and hopefully go toe to toe with our Aussie Diamond girls. Netball Fiji President Wainikiti Mbohinrao says the assistance came at the right time as the funding will go directly to the welfare of the players. Excited about the funding, especially at a time when uh, we needed the funds. We'll create a lot of excitement about the, with, with, within the netball circle. Um, uh, we've been discussing this over, the, over a few weeks now and we're just excited that it's been announced officially and of course more excited that it came from the Prime Minister, the Australian Prime Minister himself. National netball coach Vicky Wilson arrives this weekend to be part of the squad's first trial next Saturday. Fiji's in Pool C with Jamaica, South Africa, Trinidad and Tobago. The World Cup runs through the 12th to the 21st of July in the UK. Meli Tavanga, FBC Sports. Fiji National Rugby League will also be receiving assistance from the Australian government. The Aussie Prime Minister announcing that they'll provide support for the travel costs associated with the Fiji team that will compete in the New South Wales Rugby League Super Premiership in 2020. Mary Tavanga has more. A new dawn has come for the Fiji National Rugby League. And it's a dream of many, including Pedro, uh, who has long wanted to see Fiji compete in one of Australia's most beloved competitions. And I know that uh, I'll be tuning in to watch and I'm sure getting on to a, a few games, but maybe when they're playing the Jets out there uh, on, on the weekend. Morrison says they're looking forward to the pre-season NRL matches being played in the Pacific, including a match in Fiji in 2021. Also know that we want to see Australian players too enjoying more of their rugby league right here. So we're going to have a pre-season NRL matches here played in the Pacific, starting with PNG in 2020 and Fiji in the following year. The former Fiji Mbati captain who's been fighting for Fiji's sport in the competition commanded the assistance. We're very uh, grateful for the support from the Australian Federal Government who uh, I guess have... Uh, I've uh, been very uh, keen to uh, get behind uh, the Fiji New South Wales uh, Cup bid and um, you know, today's announcement by uh, Prime Minister Scott Morrison uh, definitely highlights that, that uh, now it gives us an opportunity to uh, showcase the talents of uh, the best rugby league uh, players here in Fiji. Meanwhile, Sports Minister Paravin Bala thanked the Australian government for its assistance and hope they will maintain their relationship in developing other sports in the country. Meli Tavanga, FBC Sports. Bowling Fiji is confident they will win a minimum of four gold medals at the Pacific Games in July. Team manager Ratish Lal says the team to Samoa will be made up of mostly experienced players. Koroi Tandulala reports. The team manager is confident that Bowling Fiji will not disappoint anyone this year. Whenever we went, we brought uh, in uh, gold medals and silver medals. So we are certain that uh, the caliber of players that we have got, and most of them has been retained from the previous ones. It has been a busy one for Bowling Fiji as they have a number of tournaments lined up, including the qualifier for the 2020 Olympics. 32 uh, weekends covered, you know, out of the 52. And then in between we have got uh, Asian Pacific Championships, and also Pacific Games. Bowling Fiji will be taking five men and women to the Pacific Games this year. Kurei Tandulala, FBC Sports. Wallabies star Kurt Lee Beale is under fire yet again after a second video emerged showing the utility back in a room with another suspicious white substance. This comes off the back of an apology for a video leaked earlier this week, rocking Australian rugby ahead of this year's World Cup. Serena Williams swatted aside Canada's Eugenie Bouchard in straight sets to continue her quest for a record equaling 24th Grand Slam title at the Australian Open. The American won by two straight sets over the 2014 Wimbledon finalist. Yeah, that's just too good. It's all over. Williams was impressive. In today's Play of the Day, a focus, Gabine Muguruza took her serve in the Australian Tennis Open with a bug on the court, leading to some confusion and a near miss with Johanna Conta and the ball girl. Take a look.
Seconds. 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 That's it from Sports Tonight. Angie joins you later on with weather and the new media, a lunchbox that keeps your food warm for as long as you want. Details right after the break. I am Navneet Nan, Nambu Alumbua, as the friendly note is famous, the same as Radio Fiji 2 is also famous. Radio Fiji 2 is the country of the country. सीमा नकाशी से मैं रेडियो फिजी टू पसंद करती हूँ सुनने के लिए रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धरकन मैं हूँ अंकल किंग सिंगर टू करता हूँ उनके टैक्सी ड्राइवर देशी रग्बी फेम में से वही से रेडियो फिजी टू फेम में से रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धरकन New media tonight the lunch box that could heat your food all day keep it fresh and is also leak proof. It's weather time now with Angie. Hello there and hello to the weekend. It's Friday and what a day. There is no great news for the day as it mostly consisted showers. However, it's Friday and this rain shouldn't dampen your spirits. Taking a look in the west, it's been a sunny day with scattered clouds. Eastwards from Pak Harbor to Suva, it's been cool with drizzle throughout the day and it, it will continue in their night. And up north, after a few light drizzles, it was settled. At sea, southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. For the tides, low tide at 11.29 p.m. with high tide at 5.39 a.m. Sunrise at 5.45. For tomorrow, no such excitement as the weekend mostly has showers, which can be heavy at times. Tomorrow's stems, if you're looking for some cool places to be this weekend, then Suva, Lambasa and Sabu Sabu could be the places as it will get up to 29 degrees. And looking further into Sunday, wet and rainy spells are likely, so it looks like a cozy, warm indoor weekend. And that's all from the FPC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie and Fiji and Pulse tonight. We asked, do you think drugs is fast becoming a major problem for Fiji football? Uh, drug is a big issue in uh, sports, not only in soccer, in all the sports. Uh, mostly damaging the players. Drug is a problem because it never ends well for any player. It's unfair for other players and will affect their health. It's illegal as well. Before, I'm a soccer player. I didn't use drug. Mm -hmm. Drug is not good for health, for playing soccer especially. Yeah, I think so it will be a big issue for Fiji football because we are playing soccer, you know, having a heart problem, all these things. If they uh, take uh, drugs and they play soccer, that's totally wrong. <laughs> Recapping the main stories for tonight, a 60-year-old pastor remanded for alleged rape, Australian government reveals assistance for Fiji, and USP gets over $120 million support. Now for these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question segment this week, we're asking, has daylight savings been effective? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day, a beautiful Friday morning. However, it was a grueling one for the Fiji Sevens team as they wrapped up their preparations for the Hamilton Sevens next weekend. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at fbc underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, good night. Bula, never go Malaka Leloma, go in Nakash, on the Wagrong and Bula Fib, Nabondo and Nasir. Oya was it says, Lombasa, on the Teletano Warrong and Bula Fem, Nabado and Sir. We have a Tumeli, a Kanatao no Hinatoka, Teletakina Warrong and Bula Fem, Nabando and Nasir. Never go find in a town and go sing a talk, a kit on the Teletakanambula Fem, Nabando and Sir. Bula Fem, Nabado and Sir.